Hey everyone, welcome to Orb Creations, the show where I build an app, you get to see how I do it, and you get the source code in the description. Today we're building a clock app. This app will keep track of time using an analog clock and display it to the user. The component structure of a clock is relatively simple. We'll have a styling wrapper for the outer rim, the numbers of the clock, and the hands of the clock. The hands will update over time as the time ticks forward, so we'll have to define that in a state using hooks. In our hooks file, we'll just have the useState hook hold the current time as a date object. In a useEffect hook, we'll update the time every second to the current time at that moment. The outer rim component is not so exciting, it's just a circular styling wrapper. The one significant thing here is that we set the position to relative so that we can position our hands and numbers properly inside of it. For the numbers component, we want to initialize an array with the numbers 1 through 12 and then map over those numbers to render them inside the clock. The clock will be a circle, so we'll need to do some quick maths to calculate each number's position. To do that, we're going to define a utility function that takes the diameter of the circle and the number as input and returns a CSS style that will position the number correctly. To start, we need to find the radius of the circle and convert the number into an angle measurement. Remember your high school trigonometry? We'll need to convert the angle into radians. After that, we'll use the math object to calculate the sine and cosine of the angles to get the top and left distances we need. Isn't math great? Back in our component, we'll need a ref to access the diameter of the circle we want to reference when positioning these numbers. The diameter will just be the width of the containing div, so we'll need some hooks. First, we'll initialize the width in a useState hook and the container in a useRef hook. Then, we'll define a function. I'm calling it handle resize because we want the clock and its number positions to be responsive. On resize, we want the width value to update to the new width of the container and also move the numbers. We'll bind this handler to the window resize event inside a use effect and also clean it up on unmount. Then inside a use layout effect after the use ref has instantiated, we'll call the resize handler on mount to set the width and position the numbers. Now here's where things get fun. We'll implement the hands component. All the hands component will do is render an hour's hand, a minute's hand, and a second's hand. Each component gets its respective time value, and that's all we need. For each hand, we're going to separate the functionality of rotating the hand around the clock from the actual styling of the hand. We're going to do this because all the hands need to rotate according to how its particular time variable increments. But each hand will look different. So we'll define a generic hand component to take care of the rotation first. The hand component is going to take a base and a value as props. The base is the maximum value for that time measure. For example, 24 for the hour hand or 60 for the minute hand. And the value is the current value. We'll need to write a function that translates the ratio of the value to the base into an angle measurement that rotates the hand. To do that, we'll use a get rotation helper. To make our lives a little bit easier, we're going to extend the hand the entire diameter of the containing circle, but we'll make it one half invisible. This makes writing our CSS later to style the hands much more bearable. The get rotation helper will take the base and the value as input and return the CSS transforms we need to rotate the hands. It's actually pretty simple. Now we're ready to implement the three different hands. For the hours hand, we need to pass a value that is between 1 and 12, because analog clocks only display 12 hours. We'll style the hours hand by making it slightly shorter than the other hands, as you might expect of an analog clock. For the minutes hand, we'll simply pass all our props into the hand component as is and style it as a longer version of the hours hand. Finally, the seconds hand markup will also look similar, but we'll style it with a crimson color and give it a thinner appearance to differentiate it from the other hands. And there you have it, a clock app. The app is currently hosted on Orb at clock.orbapps.com, link is in the description. 
All of the code that goes into this app is linked in the description. Be sure to check out these other videos on your screen right now. YouTube doesn't tell me ahead of time what they are, but I'm sure they're great. If you want to stay up to date on new apps we're building and coding tips and tricks, be sure to smash that subscribe button and follow us everywhere else. Until next time, remember, you should never trust a clock because they only have secondhand information.